90% of people do not give a single fuck about improvement of their brain. And honestly, it's one of the most important things which you can do to improve your life massively. So in this video, I'm going to give you 10 most important brain hacks, which really going to change your life for better and change your productivity, how you act during the day and how also you feel according to scientific researches, books and podcasts, which I heard in the last three years of my brain improvement journey. But firstly, who am I even to talk about this topic? This is me in a lab of the most famous Polish university, in a lab of neurophysiology. This is my collection of picture from Polish National Academy of Science, from also a lab of neuropharmacology. So as you can see, I'm not telling this to flex, absolutely, but I want to show that I'm really interested in this kind of topic and I might have some knowledge which can be useful for you. So let's go from the first point. If you want to achieve instant focus, there's a really easy method for that, which is called an orange method or a magic cup method. Basically, it is already known from ancient China times, where basically people use it to instantly switch their brain into focus working mode. It works, it's really simple, because simplifying very much, our brain have two main modes default more network and central executive network. For most of the time, the main system which works is a default mode network. It works when we do our habits, when we have our little routines, like waking up, brushing teeth, dressing on and going out to work, school, etc. Just thing which we don't really need to focus and think about. But central executive network is different. This is a mode which is activated mostly when we do something creative, when we are working, when we are studying, when we are just breaking shadows. And there is a really easy trick how you can do this. And it works especially good for people who suffer with such things like HDHD or dyslexia. So if you are this kind of person, it might even work better on you and you might even see greater results. But for normal, healthy people, it's also a very nice thing to try. So this method is relatively very simple because all you have to do is to imagine an orange, yes, orange on your head and that you put it in the back of your head. You have to like put all your imagination into that orange and imagine that you have it in the back of your head and magic force just hold this orange there and it takes all for more experienced people like 10 seconds and then you immediately switch into work. You just forget that you have your imaginary orange in the back of your head and you switch into work. Trust me, this method is known already from an ancient word and it works miracles. I use it on exams. I use it anytime. You don't even need to move your hands. You can just use full imagination and this is that. So let's go to the next point. When you can already focus immediately, the next thing which you might experience some problems from is of course a motivation. When you are completely not motivated to do your next thing, to start work, to start studying, to do just something other than being super lazy and wasting your life, the best thing which you can do is to spike your dopamine. Dopamine is super important and of course its levels are not stable during the day. When you experience lower level of dopamine, it's really, really hard to motivate yourself to do something. Otherwise, it is when you have high level or a peak of dopamine. This is a moment when your life gets easier and you have a drive to do something more productive. So how to cause a temporary peak? There are two really easy methods for that. One is using cold shower. Really, 30 seconds under a cold shower can give you as big spike of dopamine as taking a cocaine. And I'm not even joking. There are literally some research about that. But unlike the cocaine, this effect can last for even three hours. Of course, the more you do that, the more your body gets used to this process. So you have to do this strategically, not anytime you just, you just do not feel motivated. But even if you are so lazy that you cannot go and take a cold shower, because I know for some people it might be too hard thing to do, even though it has so many positive sides. Then you have to just do a quick session of intensive strength training, push-ups, pull-ups, maybe some training with weights. Of course, you do this until the muscle failure and the dopamine spike is very, very similar to a cold shower. So these two things can literally spike in few minutes your levels of dopamine to a levels that you will suddenly feel motivated again. But okay, 
I said that dopamine is not stable. So the next point is about boosting your general level of dopamine. Because yes, short term spikes might be sometimes useful, but our point should be to have generally high level of dopamine because people with such levels are more likely to start anything with their life. I'm sure you saw some people who have naturally high levels of dopamine, who can do multiple things during the day. They can go to school, they can go to parties, study, uh, do their hobbies all in one day, all because of they have just super high levels of dopamine, which motivates them to next and next actions. Of course, some part of that is genetical, but you can do a lot, really a lot to change your general level of dopamine. And the first thing which you need to do in the morning to spike your dopamine is to open your window or just the best option, go outside. Because blue light, speaking in general, the ray of sun which exists in the morning is meant to wake you up. And unfortunately, our windows block most parts of blue rays in the way that you cannot use them to wake you up. Also, when you go out, maximally to one hour after you are born, to your brain, to parts which are responsible for circular rhythm, comes extra information from a rays of sun, what hours exactly it is, and what kinds of hormones and neuropeptides need to be secreted right now. In this way, your body knows exactly what time is it, and because of its morning, it uses its biochemical reactions to wake you up and give you more energy, more dopamine. The next point is also about the morning, because what is the single worst thing which you can do in the morning? Maybe you already guessed, but it's looking at your phone, scrolling social media, etc. Because in this way, you already in the beginning of the day lowered your level of dopamine, lowered your attention span, and basically it's really, really hard during the later part of the day to change this process, change these biochemical reactions in your brain which put you in this passive mode. I'm sure you already experienced something that when you scroll, you feel kind of good when you watch this Netflix, etc. You feel okay. But as soon as you finish those activities, you feel like you just came out from the mind, like after really hard physical work. And it's because of firstly, very low level of dopamine. And second, because of the attention span, we just decreased massively because of this activity. So the thing which you need to do is to block your phone access during the first two hours of the day minimum. Really, there is nothing to reply to. There is not anything important there. And trust me, in 99% of cases, if something even really, really important happens, these two hours will not change anything. But it's easy to say and harder to do. So what advice can I give you to actually eliminate this phone in the first two hours of the day? And the solution is very simple. It's to download some app which will block those apps, block social media from your phone. I personally use a Freedom app and it's a very useful thing because I didn't even need to uh, choose apps which are social media and pages in the internet which also lead me to social media because this app did it automatically. Of course, it's not any promotion that they paid me completely nothing for this. The free version of this app is just enough to block all social media for the first two hours of the day. When you want something more specific, you have to, of course, pay. But for our needs, for the blocking social media for the first two hours of the day and for the hours when you will work, of course, it's up to two hours because this app just works this way. It's a very good solution. Number five are to-do lists. And it's really one of the only things in terms of productivity which actually gives something. If you are doing everything according to this list, if you are caring about your levels of dopamine, about your attention span, uh, other aspects of your health, there is really not much things which you can do in terms of your productivity, which can really help you. And I really tried a lot of these things. And one of the very only things which really worked for me were to-do lists, where you put exactly step-by-step, hour-by-hour, things which you have to do in the following day. You can even do them in the morning, what you want to do in this one particular day. These lists were done by Charles Darwin, Benjamin Franklin, Leonardo da Vinci and a lot of really great people. So they really have a power and 
they switch your brain into this deciding mode because your brain is really, really bad at making new decisions. It's a very energetically demanding process of our brain to just executing things which you already decide earlier, which is much easier for your brain. It gives a rest to your working memory, which is quite easy to overload. But most importantly, it really works. So try to do every day to-do list. You can even put there some simple stuff like meeting with your friends. Of course, have some time to do something which is also genuinely fun for you. But also when you just want to be productive and when you don't want to procrastinate, it's one of the really only thing which you can do. So let's go to the next point. Studying is a thing which you will probably have to do to the end of your life, of course, if you are a smart person who want to develop all the time. So how to make this studying a little bit easier process? Our brain is not designed to remember a lot of things, to remember a lot of information, but we can help it to remember a little bit more and how to do that exactly step by step. There is something which is called the palace of memory and it's one of the most useful and one of the most efficient memorization technique. This technique comes to the one of the most primal things which we are able to memorize as a human race. And these are places. In the past, it didn't matter what kind of constellation or clouds in your sixth birthday. It really didn't matter. But things like how to get to your hometown, how to get to your cave, where are your people from your tribe, how to find a good spot to hunting and actually be able to go there again. These were all really important things to survival. That's why also in today's world, we are especially good in remembering places. And this is exactly what this method uses. You have to imagine a place where you have already been before many times. It can be your house, your school, and just imagine by scenes your things which you need to memorize. It's hard to exactly explain, but let me give you an example. For example, let's imagine that you want to remember European capital cities. So let's take Spain. And of course, the capital city is Madrid. Let's take uh, Portugal, the capital city is Lisbon. And you have to just think, for example, let's imagine your kitchen, your room, and let's imagine some. And you have to imagine something which is connected with Spain. I don't know, maybe a bull. For me, the Spain is a bull and something which for you is reminding you a word of Madrid or Madrid itself. For me, Madrid, of course, reminds me of football team Real Madrid. So I imagine a footballer which is riding on a bull. The next we have Lisbon and of course, it's a capital city of Portugal. So I imagine something which reminds me of Portugal. I'm sorry for a football fans because it again gonna be a Ronaldo which reminds me of Portugal and Lisbon. It sounds a little bit like leak leak something. So I, of course, for me, because I'm not American, I have different imagination in the words. So I imagine that Ronaldo leaks its capital city. And this is how I remember things. And basically the things which you need to use for the palace method is your imagination and places where you've already been in the past. And it's the most efficient memorization technique. Let's go for the number seven. Now you already memorized something, but what is actually the best way to study when you already memorize some stuffs? It is to do a test exactly after you got know what the material is about. This method is already mentioned by an Andrew Huberman, which is really excellent neurobiologist. And he said, and according to scientific research, the students who immediately after they learned something, try to do a test from a material which they just learned got 50% better results than students who just reminded material passively. This is how big advantage you will have when you will just try to do tests just after you study. But what is even more surprising is the fact that students who passively revised the material three or four times felt much better prepared than students who just did tests. And But on the real exam, students who did tests make much better results. So this is a studying tip. Moreover, the scientific researches also show that this effect lasts for a long term because it hits your long term memory. If I knew this in high school, I would be in a different place where I am now. But anyway, let's go further. Let's go to a number eight. And these are same hours. Our brain basically get used to the same activities every day at the same hours. So if you every day go sleep at 9 p.m. 
and wake up at seven, it will be probably very, very hard for you to go sleep, let's say two hours later or earlier. This is how our brain works. And also the same is with your work. When you schedule your work at very different hours every day, it's really hard for your brain to get focus and really study effectively in those different hours. You have to schedule exactly same hours every day. Uh, it's especially before the exams where you will be studying. And do not change those hours. Of course, I know it's often really not possible, but at least try, at least try to schedule your work, schedule your studying at the exactly same hours every day. Let's go to the next point, number nine. And these are, and this is also connected because I'm gonna talk about brain cycles. When you want to study for the three hours straight, most probably the last hours will not be effective at all. Our brain works in cycles. And one cycle of our brain work is similar to one cycle of our sleep because it lasts for exactly one and a half hours for some people too, it depends. But for most of people, one and a half hours. After this time, your brain needs some extra time to rebuild neurotransmitters, get rest, clean working memory, etc. So you have to do after one and a half hour, 15 minutes break. Of course, do not scroll during this time. Do not go to Netflix. Do something to chill out and a little bit and make your brain a little bit more quiet. Like for example, slow walk, talking with your family, with your friends, listening to some calm music. But remember about those rests because you can lose even 90% of your productivity if you just work too much without doing a rest for your brain. So work in brain cycles. Another thing is the Pomodoro method. I use it, especially when the material is super hard or super boring because and also when my attention spam during that particular day is super low because it happens for anyone. So the thing which I do is to study for 25 minutes straight as hard as I only can, because then I know I will have a break for five minutes and then again, 25 minutes. It works especially good when you hate the subject or the, when the material is super hard, because it gives you a sense of the studying that you know exactly how much time you're gonna, let's say, waste for that and when the break will appear. And also your brain will in those five minutes have some extra time to rebuild your neurotransmitters and will also get some dopamine for let's say one done task. And the number 10 is to learn the hard way. No distractions, no scrolling phone. Everyone wants to hear about studying while sleeping, about easy stuff, easy ways how you can achieve your goals. But really our brain just do not work that way. When you want to remember more, you just need to focus more. You just need to pay more attention into details and you need to really try to learn the hard way. Think what is hard for you. Is it just reading over and over the same book or maybe it is creating a palace of memory, which I mentioned before. It is to constantly passively revise the material or it is actually to trying to remind what you just learned. And this is the way to study effectively. Just try to do this the hard way because in this way your brain remember the most and it is based by scientific research. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you are interested in things like boosting your IQ, increasing your memorization, I have a special ebook about that. So if you are interested in this kind of things, you can buy it for only $10 at Amazon. Thank you very much for watching this video. See you later. Ciao, ciao. Like, comment, subscribe.